Hello, my name is Jiaming. I'm from High Performance Robotics Lab of UC Berkeley, advised by Professor Mark Mueller. Today, I would like to present to you our research about a collision-resilient aero vehicle with icosahedron tesagrity structure. Many of us have seen some aero vehicle failure due to collision with obstacles. For example, in this video, the aero vehicle fails to see the branches of a tree and crashed on it. In fact, despite the development of various collision avoidance technologies, it is still very challenging for aero vehicles to operate in environments with obstacles that are hard to detect and difficult to avoid, such as in forests and caves. Collisions with obstacles can often disrupt missions and damage vehicles. To help aero vehicles operate in challenging environments, many collision resilience designs have been proposed. A popular approach of collision resilient design is to protect the propellers of the vehicle. For example, sphere cages that can rotate about propellers are shown in the picture on the left. The design prevents the vehicle from bending moment and thus increases its surviving rate. Another popular approach is to protect the vehicle with an overall shell. An example is shown on the right of the slide. In our work, we wish to extend the current designs and create a vehicle with resilience to collisions at high speed, which can be essential for time-critical operations. To meet our end, we get our inspiration from tensegrity structures. Tensegrity, also known as tensional integrity, refers to a system of components under compression inside a network of continuous tension. One unique characteristic of the tensegrity is that no structural members would experience bending moment. The structure can distribute load among its members and hence can provide a very strong collision resilience with lightweight. The lightweight collision resilience feature of tensegrity has made it a potential candidate for planetary landers and exploratory rovers. It has also been proposed as a rescue robot dropping from helicopters or drones. In this video, we can see a tensegrity robot being dropped from high in the air. It successfully survived the collision. Taking advantage of the unique features of the tensegrity, we have designed a collision-resilient aero vehicle with icosahedron tensegrity structure, as is shown here on the slide. In this presentation, we will focus on a simplified stress analysis for tensegrity structure that we used to guide our design. In the controller we used to reorient the vehicle from an arbitrary orientation on the ground to help it take off. The goal of the structure design is to make it as light as possible under the condition that it can survive the given impact. We simplified the complicated impact process with an easier static problem. The vehicle is under forces summing up to the maximum collision force that a vehicle will endure during the collision. If the components of the tensegrity can hold this force, it can survive the collision. Notice that there are two possible configurations during a collision. The impact can take place on the surface with three string pieces, or on the surface with only two string pieces. Assuming that all nodes have zero acceleration, we can arrive at a force equilibrium for each node of the tensegrity with Newton's law. The equation one shows that for each node, Force from rods, force from strings, and the external forces are balanced out. It is noteworthy that Nr and Ns here stand for the connectivity function representing the structure of the tensority. Nr ij equals to k if rod k connects node i and j. Similarly, Ns ij equals to l if string piece l connects node i and j. However, as the icosahedron tensegrity is a self-stressing structure, the force equilibrium cannot be uniquely solved. As a result, we find the solution with the minimum energy principle. We assume that the vehicle is under minimum self-stress and solve the optimization problem formulated here. The cost function is the sum of total potential energy stored in the rods and strings, and we want to minimize this value. The optimization problem is under the constraint that the force equilibrium is met, and we assume that the compression and tension in the members of the tensegrity 
is following Hooke's law. After solving the compression tensions in the system, we can then choose the rods and strings that can withstand the maximum stress based on weight and availability. We end up designing the vehicle with carbon fiber rods and braided face wires. The specs of the designed vehicle is as follows. The tensegrity weighs 50 grams, and the length of each rod in the structure is 20 centimeters. The total weight of the vehicle is 252 grams, and has a maximum total thrust to weight ratio of 3.4 to 1. We also tested the collision resilience of the designed vehicle. Experiment shows that it can survive collision with speed of 6.5 meters per second. Next, I would like to briefly introduce the control architecture of the system. It features a cascaded control structure. A position controller outputs desired total thrust and thrust direction, whereas an attitude controller computes desired torques. Finally, a thrust converter maps the total thrust and body torque into per propeller thrust commands. This cascaded structure can be decoupled into two separate parts, an offboard controller for position and attitude control, and an onboard controller for thrust conversion. By extending the flight controller, we came up an autonomous reorientation controller to adjust the vehicle orientation after it lands upside down so as to help it take off. The autonomous reorientation controller takes advantage of the 20-phase geometry of the tensegrity and reduces a complicated task into a finite state machine. The controller breaks the whole rotation into a series of easier to implement rotations about edges of the tensegrity shell. For example, the vehicle lands with face 14 on the ground and wish to rotate to an orientation that phase 1 is the contact phase. Instead of directly rotating from 14 to 1, it will rotate from 14 to 18, 18 to 11, and finally from 11 to 1. The first thing that autonomous reorientation controller does is to identify the face contacting the ground. As the rods of the tensegrity is parallel to the axis of the body's frame, each contact face will correspond to a specific roll pitch attitude pair. In other words, as long as the contact face of the vehicle remains unchanged, its roll and pitch angles will stay the same, despite any rotation about the z-axis of the earth frame. Now we can identify the current contact face as the one with minimum reduced attitude difference from the current estimation. The detail of how we are doing this can be captured by the equations on the right. First, I would like to briefly introduce the notations used here. Bold capital R represents rotation and rotation matrices, whereas small letter R represent rotation and Euler angles. On the other hand, capital theta represents rotations and axis angle pairs. Last but not least, function f denotes conversion between different rotation representations. In the first equation, ri represents the attitude of the vehicle when its face i is contacting the ground with a zero yaw angle. We compute this for all 20 faces and store it in the controller. When identifying the contact face, the controller will compute the attitude difference between the current estimated roll pitch pair and the pre-computed reduced roll pitch pair of all faces. It will then identify the contact face as the one with minimum attitude difference. After identifying the current contact face, we need then to compute the target attitude when the next face is contacting the ground. The figure on the slide showcases how we are computing this. The blue triangle represents the current face, Fi and the red triangle denotes the face that we try to rotate to, fi plus 1. nj and nk are the two nodes on the common edge of the two faces. As a result, the rotation can be represented with an axis angle pair. The axis is the vector pointing from nj to nk, whereas the angle can be computed from the inverse cosine of the dot product of hi and hi plus 1.
which are vectors on fi and fi plus 1 respectively, that are orthogonal to the common edge. Afterwards, we can compute the target attitude by rotating the current estimated attitude with the desired rotation we just computed. Now that we know how to rotate from one phase to another, we now want to find out the path of reorientation. To do this, we first create the reorientation graph. Each node in the graph is a contact phase, and each edge represents a possible rotation about an edge of the tensegrity. The number on the edge represents the rotation angle in degrees. For example, node 14 and 16 are connected with an edge. It means that two faces can rotate to each other with an angle of 39 degrees. However, during an experiment, we find that not all rotations on the graph are feasible. Some rotations require very large rod torque that the vehicle cannot generate. The corresponding edges of these rotations are highlighted in yellow in the picture on the right. And we take out these rotations from the reorientation graph. After deleting these invisible edges, we notice that the graph is no longer fully connected. Specifically, node 16, 13, 10, and 5 are no longer connected to other parts of the graph. This means that if we land on these contact faces, we cannot reorient the vehicle to other contact faces that they cannot connect to. To solve the problem, we enable two special rotations from contact phase 13 to 1 and phase 5 to 1. These rotations are not about edges on the shell. Instead, they are about nodes. After enabling these two rotations, the graph is fully connected again. Now we can generate a reorientation map with the A-star search from our fully connected graph. The result is shown here in figure C. Once the vehicle identifies its current contact phase, it will follow the reorientation map to its goal. For example, if the vehicle notices that it's now at context phase 6, as is shown here on the third row of the map, it will then rotate to 8, 17, 3, and then finally arriving at 1, an orientation that it can easily take off. We tested the reorientation controller on different surfaces, some of which are not perfectly even, such as sand, wood shavings, and cement. With collision resilience and reorientation controller, the vehicle now has the ability to resume operation after collision. In this video, we see that the vehicle collides with an obstacle, drops to the ground, then it rotates itself with the reorientation controller till the propeller is pointing upwards, and then take off to resume the operation. To sum up, in this presentation, we show a collision resilient aero vehicle that can survive high speed collisions. We use a simplified stress analysis to guide the design of our tense equity shell, which is strong yet lightweight. Last but not least, we showcase the autonomous reorientation controller that can adjust the orientation of the vehicle on the ground for an easier takeoff. This work is sponsored by the UC Berkeley Fire Research Group and the College of Engineering. I would also like to invite you to visit the website of my lab at hyperlab.berkeley.edu for more interesting ongoing research projects. Thank you very much for watching this video.